Hello, and welcome to Conversations with Shauna. I'm so glad to be here today, and I can't wait to introduce you to my guest. Um, but before I do that, for those of you who have not met me yet, my name is Shauna Roche, and I'm a transformational coach and numerologist, and I work with my clients to help them through fear, doubt, and uncertainty into love, expansion, and possibilities. So thank you so much for joining us today. If you are here live, say hi so we can say hi back. If you're on the replay, give me hashtag replay so I can say hi later and if you're coming in from my powerhouse women women empowering women group there's a link above this live um, for to give stream your permission so we can see who you are when you're commenting so with having said that I'm now going to introduce you to my beautiful guest Roberta Robbins thank you Roberta I'm so grateful to have you here it's so wonderful to be here and spend some time with you and have a conversation Yes, I love it. Having a conversation. So I'm just going to introduce you to Roberta. So Roberta is a compassionate, sacred medicine weaver. I love that. I'm like, ooh, tell me more. That's exciting. Sacred soul coach and mentor, healer, and sacred space holder. She's the creatrix and the facilitator of the School of the Sacred Medicine Path, Sacred Wisdom Circles, Workshops, and Sacred Soul Journeys and Retreats. Oh, that just sounds amazing. She's passionate about creating soul nurturing magical experiences for others to remember, reclaim, and embody their soul power in wisdom. And Roberta's mission is to inspire, support, and guide others to know their sacredness, to live a magical life, and to embody their soul power and wisdom. That just feels amazing. <laughs> sounds like a really big job in some ways <laughs> it, does. it does I could just I could just feel the power so yeah. this, it's such a big topic because when you look at you know like you have here embodying your sacred soul truth and navigating your soul's journey yeah like like just even sitting with that and going wow what does all that mean especially you know for people who who are just maybe starting this journey, haven't been on this journey yet, who are who are just curious to like, okay, Roberta, what do you do? What is all this lovely sacredness? So let's just have a conversation about that and, and what, what that's like. Yeah, well, and as, as we're saying this, it's funny how all of a sudden this like, this energy is coming, like I can almost feel it like washing down and anchoring. And I would say, that's part of what it is. It's the, sacredness of ourselves, understanding what our sacredness is. And I use that word sacred a lot in my work because it's a sacredness of us and the sacredness of us meeting divine divinity, what's around us, what's within us. So it's a, it's, it's a pretty big thing. Um, and here you said, like, when we talked about, well, what, what are we going to talk about today? Because yes, I, I would say my medicine basket, my magic box, it's, it's pretty full with lots of things and um you know i could have i was like think about what could i go into today about things but what's coming up is really about how are we honoring our soul truth but how are we embodying that how are we embodying the sacredness so for me i'm i mean i it's part of who i am and part of my walk that's first it just comes from me um in the sense that my life has been this journey of discovering recalling, embodying, reclaiming yeah. essence of myself, of what my sacredness is to my truth, to my yeah. soul, to remember who I am beyond this life and other lives and the divine of what like words we don't even have and somehow bring it all in and in Yeah, we did go somewhere for a moment. Yeah. yeah, we froze for a moment. We froze for a moment, but we're back. And hopefully you heard some of that because maybe we needed to just take a pause. <laughs> <laughs> so I find as I walk my own journey and do my own, you know, my own medicine and, and that it strengthens me and I, it, I'm passionate about just helping and supporting other people's journey and whatever that may look like. And these days, I really am finding that people are going deeper. We're feeling it. They're knowing it. They're wanting to understand how does it feel? What experiences does that look like? Because um, it's unique for everybody, right? So 
for me, I'm offering various tools and medicine for people to kind of weave through and see what speaks the loudest, what what's like, oh, that's the essence of me. And how am I going to weave that back into my life? And so through one on one that I do with my clients, through sacred containers, workshops, sacred circles, through retreats, which I'm missing running right now, because if life was pre COVID, Roberta would have been in Ireland. And she would have been running her Ireland retreat this year. Um, so I'm missing Ireland because I've spent the last couple years there. Um, so finding it, we're also navigating what, where are we in this new world? Because we're being something else is being asked of us and what's being called forth for us. So these days I'm kind of navigating different methods to work with people and to also work and continue my own journey and what that looks like. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that feels so good. And as you were saying that it was just kind of, I was just feeling the whole going within. And I love that everything you said is around sacred, 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 because we are, we are so sacred and we, we don't even, most of us are, have grown up, you know, where it's like doing, 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 and we have these specific lives that, you know, our parents and previously, you know, it's been like, here's your life. Here's how it's supposed to be your roadway. You like your pathway. And then all of a sudden it's like, yeah, no, that that's not feeling like that's, you know, my pathway anymore. And like, for me, I'm in my fifties when I, when I just realized this. So I love that you said like the word sacred, cause that just, that just like, oh, I can feel that because now is the time to I'm feeling like really go in and and really truly understand what going in is versus outside knowing that yeah there's nothing outside that I need it's all within then I'll create my outside and so just tell us a little bit about your journey because you've been doing this work for a, a long time and I didn't even realize that till I was reading the one part of your bio and I was like wow that is so beautiful yeah oh you froze for a second or was it me? Oh, uh, why? There we go. We're back in. Right. So <laughs> how long? 44 years so far, right? Um, I feel like since I've, you know, entered into this, as I think we all have, since we entered into this particular life, we've been on this journey. Um, but I would say, you know, some people definitely have a moment, like a moment. There's something that happens and they're like something switches over. And what I realized for me, I've had key moments to step more powerfully into my journey, but I've always been aware of it. I've yeah. always been walking and talking with, with spirit, with source, with nature, with animals, listening to guides since I was young. Like, as you, like I have moments of things I'll say to my mom about something and she'd be like, Say, <laughs> um, yeah, she would say, "How you can't remember that?" I'm like, "But I do remember that." Um, so the journey has kind of always been aware of this life and this path. And there's, like I said, there's been key markers that have really had challenges. You know, um, those dark nights of the souls that really make us go, "Okay, where am I going? What am I doing?" Right. So to have that experience to help me along mine, but also to have that understanding to support other people in my path like you know if you i was fine if you have it super easy which i wouldn't say everybody has a super easy demand doesn't matter what your path looks like everybody has what is given to them for what is needed and uh but the depths of things on my journey has definitely helped me to go deeper with how you can hold a sacred container exactly hold on one sec yeah okay you guys it's okay hold on Oh my. Oh my. Oops. <laughs> okay. Sorry, everybody. I'm laughing because um, our neighbor is rototill. I think he's doing something to our front yard for us. And I'm like, I have no idea. But anyway. <laughs> so that's interesting. So there's a out, outdoor stuff, there's doggy stuff going on barking and wants to be part of things and you know we've had a little glitches so is there something that is not ready to be um heard or is there a push and a birthing that's happening here which is the container the things i think i wanted to talk about it's like it's almost like we're birthing into something 
deeper and more for ourselves right now. Yeah. But there's some resistance around us. <laughs> I love that. Oh my God, that's so perfect. <laughs> are we going to keep pushing through? Are we going to keep breathing through this? Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's like no more pushing, no more resistance. Oh, we froze again. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I'm not sure who's frozen, if it's you or me or both of us. <laughs> well, we're back. It just goes off. Okay. That's what I see. I see it both screens are kind of thinking about it. And then we come <sighs> back. There you go. Yeah. So we the energy. Keep, are we birthing? Are we going through a birthing canal right now, Shauna? I don't know, maybe? I think we are. I think something magical is happening. <laughs> What are we supposed to get to the point here? Pull together. Okay, go on. <laughs> I don't know what you've heard or what's happened, but trust that whatever's coming through is what you're supposed to be hearing right now. <laughs> exactly. And Elaine's joining us. Hello, Elaine. <laughs> Glad you're here. Wow. Um, yeah, so the journey is different. As we were talking about, the journey's different. Yeah. And um, these days, it just feels like people are ready to step in something more deep and sacred, which is themselves. Exactly. Exactly. And yeah. it's definitely more and more what's going on, especially with everything in the outside world. It's just turn to your inside world where, where that is your trust. And oh, hello. Now I have a visitor. <laughs> Well, you might as well say hi. We're going to have two hour long call right now, right? Hello, lovely. All right. Hi, everybody. My name's Cody. I'm a mama's boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's how we roll today. Yeah. Yeah. You know, let's, it's, yeah. And that journey into, into where we are. Um, and also just, just take a minute here, like harmonizing, like, you know, your divine feminine and masculine. Let's yeah. talk about that because I know when sometimes one side can feel so off. Well, I think it's important that, you know, people understand that they are divine masculine and feminine, both within them, right? And, um, you know, you and I can, easily say connect with well the divine feminine but even what is a divine feminine and then to have the divine masculine within ourselves and bouncing that out and knowing the dance of the two um being okay when we have to step into our divine masculine but also know that it's okay when that divine feminine is Oh, lost you. And we're back. <laughs> so I don't know how much you're get. Are you actually hearing and connecting with the words? I don't know on your side. It just drops off and comes right back on for me. Yeah, it's kind of doing that here right now. Okay, so we're doing the same thing. It's not like a frozen, just kind of the, the service is like drops and comes on. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It, that's weird. Yeah, it's, that's different than usually what happens when we're on live with yeah. things. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it's all a journey within ourselves, right? Bouncing that first, having that sacred relationship with ourselves, because we are seeking that relationship outwards. We have to understand what it is for us. And we have to understand, like a lot of people now have are working through that, are working through that within themselves, but they're also seeking that divine sacred partner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whatever that might look like. And knowing, being able to discern are they bounced within their divine masculine and feminine? Oh, because wow. it's not going to work. If you're like working on that and you have a partner that comes in or you're with a partner and you don't see that and there's not a possibility and there isn't that dance that you're both working, it, it's not. It's going to be really hard. It's going to drag one person down um, as they're trying to move forward and the other one may feel frustrated. Like there's going to be this total disconnect. So there's that honoring ourselves within our relationships ourselves, 
which is why one of the topics is because you know definitely is a highlight of things that I'm working on my in within my life and my relationship and owning and trusting what I need which isn't the always the easiest thing so that's part of the journey too is like hearing what your soul truth is mm -hmm. coming back to the beginning what is your soul truth what is your wisdom and are you going to honor yourself and if you're honoring yourself and listening well, how are you embodying that? What's that looking like? What's it feeling like? Like, and that was part of the other, you know, topic at the, for this is how does it feel? What's it look like if you are walking that path and doing that work to honor yourself? And it looks different for everybody, right? But sometimes we need to have support. Sometimes we need to know we are not alone. Yeah. That's a big thing. It's okay, you guys. It's okay. Oh. He's like, there's people outside, Mama. I want to go bark. <laughs> You're good. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> okay, honey. It's all good. It's all good. No barky. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I tell you, this is just, I, I don't know. It's funny today, hey? Oh, you cut out. Now you're back. Yeah. So new. Sorry, you. you're I was waiting. <laughs> there you go. There you go. At least it's a mutual across the board. It's happening to both of us. Yeah, isn't that something? Hey. And I mean, both of us are sitting here like with our Wi-Fi boosters so close too. So I'm like, yeah, I'm like Yeah. Definitely one of those. I love, I love that you said about relationships because that's such a big one. That, that is just so, so huge. And I've really seen a lot in the last couple of years um, just with, you know, the, the women in our circle, you know, how everybody, you know, you're, you're stepping into your power and your truth and becoming like whatever it is, you know, each individual is becoming and then the disconnect with the partners. So even talking about that, it's, it, it is so huge. And I actually personally, feel so blessed that my husband's been on this journey with me and he he's growing too and it's it's been pretty it's been pretty amazing for both of us mm -hmm. but um yeah with my ex there's just no way i could have totally seen that go a different way so mm -hmm. yeah i've been i feel like i've been seeing and talking a lot more to um especially women about relationships ending what they're truly wanting all the struggles that come up with that it's the struggles of how much are you honoring yourself and sometimes we want to throw the old paradigm in there and think it's about the relationship and about the other person yeah. it's about ourselves and how much we d desire to live our truth and to be loved the depths that we want to be the depths yeah, that, which can be real tricky because if we don't have that depth and look after and self love and nurture and come into ourselves to understand what that feels like for ourselves, mm -hmm. how are you going to know what that feels like when you bring another person into the mix and be able to be solid in who you are, to be intimate and open in that you know that you desire if you can't be that for yourself first? Yeah, yeah, that is yeah, that's so true. The, the, I love that you said the depth of it because yeah. yeah, and 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 especially like loving yourself enough, like enough or more, whatever. I don't even know what the wording is here. It's just love yourself to where it's okay to make those choices to choose you, mm -hmm. knowing that um, otherwise you you're not living, you're not living the life you're meant to live, right? Yeah. So, you know, to do that, to choose that, to discover that there's support that's needed, a community that's needed, at least a few really good, deep friends that understand, really, truly understand. Mm -hmm. And it's about all that medicine tools, all those sacred things that you have. It's time to actually use them and be know when you need to know to do what what needs to come out of that toolbox of your for yourself to work through this to support yourself um if you're working with you know your spirit family um the unseen beyond the veil like who who are the ones that need to come in and support you who do you have that conversation with too because you're working in a in a with this 
realm, this 3D realm of life with the 5D realm with your soul self. And so it's more than just our, our relationships here. It's the relationships beyond too. There's, so there's a lot, I think, when people are really stepping into their truth, really stepping into their power and the wisdom and that sacred relationship itself and the sacred relationship as a sacred union with somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I could just, I just, I could feel that. I'm like, oh. And, and, and it is such a journey, like you were saying, that truly honoring yourself and your sacredness and with you working with your clients, that there isn't, it's not about like a cookie cutter kind of, kind of program or whatever. It is so one-on-one -on -one customized working with them and, you know, helping them, helping them. I don't know how to say it, step into who they are. Like, I, I'm like, I'm lost for words here talking to you because I'm just like, I'm like just feeling like, wow, this is such beautiful work. So let's just talk about that for a minute, like with you working with your clients. Yeah. So, you know, part of the, as you were giving me that lovely, you know, sharing the bio mm -hmm. of Roberta Robbins, where Roberta is in 2020, um, you know, there's that, I started the Sacred Medicine Path program a few years ago yeah. and that was about people understanding the foundations their soul foundations bringing them up through that and them feeling those different stages those different medicines what felt right to them what was something they needed to reclaim and then what no not so much the what's but how the toolbox is you know building and how are they weaving it how are they weaving their medicine mm -hmm. and so even nowadays you know i'm working a bit with clients like that, but I have moved, I have transitioned that I find that the clients that I'm working with these days are people that have this beautiful toolbox too. Mm -hmm. And now they're having to remember exactly how they're using them. What is maybe letting go right now? What is being called in more? What's the new story? What's the empoweredness of it? Um, and so I hold a lot of space to help them remember who they are, what tools they already have, support them through those sticky parts, give them some light when light needs to be shone mm -hmm. in certain areas, but it feels dark. Yeah. Um, you know, hold it, that helping hand that, that, you know, that support the guidance without, you know, like non-judgment with, with compassion. Um, and that is the biggest thing I think we can offer within this work. So I, I would say those are the kind of things I'm doing these days with one-on-one, -on -one, but also in containers is listening, supporting, and offering some support and guidance that really is a reflection also to their soul that maybe they've forgotten. So it's an echo that comes in and they're like, oh, oh, what is that? And sometimes it's really clear, like, oh, I totally forgot about that. And sometimes it's just something that's activating and waking up. So when we're in sacred space and circle gatherings together, when we get to be live together, when we get to go to sacred spaces, um, sites that I love to go to, to hold retreats, there is extra support there with the land, with so much of the sacredness and spirit that they can literally, it's palpable. Wow. They can breathe it in, integrate it in and remember themselves. Some of the two of them come and dance together. Um, so it's a bigger, different container than what I have been doing for people because people are ready. There's people now I'm seeing that are ready for this next step into themselves, into their journey. Mm -hmm. Before we were just gathering, <laughs> we were getting our tools together. We were gathering the magic. We were, you know, navigating what we needed to navigate to get to this part of our journey. I love that. Oh, that is so awesome. And when you talk about your retreats, like, have you done one in Ireland before? Or was this going to be like a first time? Are they different all the time? Well, I have done events and various things in Ireland. Um, this would have been because I was looking forward to this one this year, because of Sewing, which is usually when I'm there. I've been there the last couple of years. So Halloween, Sewing, but also with our blue moon, our second full moon, I'm like, you know, it would have been beautiful to have had a, I like having intimate groups of, 
you know, eight to 12 is perfect uh, for me, like I said, like really big groups. Um, so this would have been unique for this year for that kind of container for Ireland, though I've done other containers and workshops and trainings on that while I've been there. I've run a few retreats in Peru in the Sacred Valley. Um, ideally, I was going to be running one next spring, but I, who knows when that will be. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, here in Canada and, you know, various locations. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Okay. Ireland and Peru, I'm definitely, like, want to know more. <laughs> Yeah. I'm like, wow. Yeah. I think the thing is when it comes to when I hold these different spaces, these baker sacred containers, it's people just know, they feel it. It's a stirring within their soul, the connection that says, I just gotta go. I don't even know why I gotta go, but I gotta go. Yeah. Because I'm they may feel my energy of the container that I'd be holding, but they start to feel the land. They start to feel the ancestors of the place, the medicine, the traditions, they start to feel something within their soul saying, yes, you need to go. You need to remember, you need to reclaim. Yeah. That is so beautiful. Oh, I can just, yeah. Yeah. I love that you pick like, like you said, with the land and everything. I mean, for me in my first retreat was when I met so many beautiful women that, you know, started down my pathway of, you know, like just, just opening me up, right. And like personal development, personal growth, like learning, you know, everything, you know, taking Joyce courses, like, like just everything, right. Like I met like, I don't know, 18 women. And that was a big thing for me. And that opened my, that opened a whole world to me that, yeah, it's been, it's been pretty magical ever since it started on this journey for me. So I, I just, oh my God, I love that. And this conversation is just like, you know, it's really interesting just having you on here and talking to you. My, I just feel so calm and so just like, ah. <laughs> well, like I said, we could sit here and probably have a conversation for a while. And and I have this urge to say, so Shauna, tell me about the sacredness within you. Like I want, you know, I want to know a little bit how is how are you living a sacredness in your life? What does that look like? What does it feel like? Yeah. You know, that's, that is like, that's a hard question to answer. Like even on a live, like just sitting there and thinking about that, like I would almost have to just be quiet for a while and like, just sit there and go, how am I, you know, how am I, I know every morning when I get up, right. It's like, it's just, I know my little rituals and stuff, but there's times throughout the day that I'm like, hmm, am I? Hmm. I think when I see that, with, sometimes we get into doing our beautiful rituals and our moments throughout the day, but there's a deeper breath, a sacredness, a sacred breath, a deeper sacred pause that's asking us to feel and hear a little bit more, to open up a little bit more of ourselves to let yeah. that in. Yeah. That's where, that's where that soul sacredness is, right? Just the deeper, deeper, open, open. Yeah. And we need the stillness. We need to stop. And it is a hard, it's an intense, it's such an intense question. We wouldn't think, well, what's my sacredness? What does it feel? Am I sacred? What does sacredness feel like to me? Um, what is that? Yeah. <laughs> what, what is my soul truth? I mean, these are big these are big questions yeah. so yeah it's a journey it doesn't happen um in a session on a call i think that's also an important thing that it's realizing we are on a journey and it takes more than one breath yes right yeah. and we need time to integrate it and feel it and have things in our life reflected and so that we can dance with the duality of things so that we can really know. Right. Yeah. And it does create, it means us creating the space and putting it as an importance for us to dive into ourselves deeper. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. But there's time for fun. You got to have fun and laughter in there. Like, I mean, that's all this seems like, holy cow, Roberta, it's pretty, pretty intense stuff. Like, I don't know if I would can I work with you? I don't know. <laughs> yes, you can, because Roberta can be quite silly and we need laughter and we need to play and we need to put that energy in between things from when it's a personal session or 
time in a call. I think, I don't know if you've ever been on a silly, you've probably been on, you've been on a call where we've had play and laughter and then there's tears yeah. and there's stuff that's coming up and then there's joy and laughter and then we bounce it out. And that's the same with like being away anywhere, being a container or whatever it is, we need to bounce and honor where we're feeling within the moment and it being perfectly, perfectly where we need it to be. We yeah. can't be serious and deep all the time because because we're not just that. <laughs> That's why we're, we're so much more. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, and I mean, yeah, I'm always having fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I laugh. I, 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 yeah, I'm just always having fun. I always do silly stuff around the house and I'm laughing and there's times where I, I just always laugh at myself too. <laughs> which is so important this morning I left my office here as walking to go to the kitchen to have a cup of coffee. And I was doing some kind of like little dance cause I had the music going and my partner, he's like looking at me I'm like, Oh, this is the morning time routine. And my cat, my ra Raven, my black cat was walking with me. I'm like, I'm trying to teach Raven to do a little dance with me as I walk to the kitchen. Um, <laughs> when then we called it the monster bash, we were trying to do the monster bash to the kitchen. So, you know, you could be silly. Teach your cat how to do the monster bash. Yeah. Because it's Halloween month, right? So. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, I love it. I, love it. <laughs> I have morning dance-offs with my dogs all the time. And then Bernie was home yesterday, right, with it being Thanksgiving here in Canada. And it was really funny. I, I, was in my, I wasn't feeling that great all weekend. And I was in my jammies all day Sunday. Like, I actually was in my office working for nine hours on Sunday. Put, like, literally created some amazing stuff because he was watching golf and neither one of us were feeling that great so i was like in my jammies and i, I don't i can't even remember the last time i've been in my jammies like that all day and then yesterday i woke up with a little bit more energy in me and then i had songs playing and then me and the dogs were dancing i'm like yeah that's what we do every morning <laughs> this is that part of our routine <laughs> it's pretty routine but it, you know that in itself can be part of your sacred morning practice yeah, yeah i love that it just it just feels so good to dance and and sometimes you know you just the music flows and it's just like oh yeah this feels good and you're just like okay yeah i'm ready to take on the day <laughs> yeah. and that's part of like what you know even in my sacred medicine path program it's been things like that we've like gone through it's like you don't have to overwhelm yourself with trying to live this big devotional sacred life and and all of it it can be just little moments in your yeah. day it's like when you're having your shower in the morning connecting with the water right mm -hmm. i hear people and i know myself the one of the best times to get downloads and connect is during a shower because the water itself is holding the essence and spirit and it's helping us so we can be living more of a sacredness uh, of ourselves in little moments throughout the day it's just us becoming aware that's what flips it over right it's just our conscious awareness yeah. And the energy to it. Yeah. It's just mindlessly running through the day. Yeah. Right? yeah. So that's like living our sacred life and, and us learning how to embody things within ourselves and honor what we need. A day in our pajamas. Well, that's maybe just exactly what we need sometimes. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I love that. I love that. And I've been taking little breaks because I can just, I'm also the type of like when I'm focused on something, like it was cute because even on the weekend, I think Saturday, same thing. I was in my office for six hours Saturday and like nine hours Sunday and Bernie would come in every now and then. He's like, damn, he's like, I, you're, you are so dedicated and you're so, he's like, you're just a machine when you get going. And I am. And it's like, but there's times where it's like, okay, I have to take a break, whether it's to grab water, tea, go to the bathroom. But then when I take those breaks, I'll take like whatever 10 minutes or something. And then I'll just kind of go through what I'm grateful for. And then what, if I'm working on something, like I was working on some landing pages and stuff, and then also I put some together and because I didn't want to hire it out, I wanted to learn how to do it myself. And because I was creating and it was like, it was a, re a representation of me then I just got so giddy and excited. And then I was proud of myself. And I was like, Hey, let's just take this moment. Let's just celebrate what you just did. Cause you just like created nine landing pages. Like that's freaking awesome. And let's take those moments to go, wow. Okay. Instead of powering through to the next thing. And so I would look at that as a sacred moment too, right? It's just taking those things and throughout my day to like honor and be proud of what I've done and the gratitude. And, and just, if it's like something all of a sudden something triggers and it's like send forgiveness and, and then just be like, okay, it's all, it's all just kind of, it's all happening. 
Well, like even you said, you are in your 50s and you feel like you're just like, I'm just like, I'm just really starting to understand what who I am and what I really want. And you sitting down and creating beautiful landing pages that you are now stepping back and looking at and going, this, I can feel me. I can see me. And I'm so proud that I even did this chose to do it this way for myself, but also reflecting what you've created, that you've birthed, here we go, birthing, you've birthed out part of yourself out. And that's the other thing, like most of us are birthing our careers, our our containers, what we're doing in the world, it's just an essence of our journey and us birthing ourselves and sharing it in the world. And it's not so much work, then is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. If it's work and it's draining you, I mean, there's always effort that has to be put in, but it should feel like you still can take that breath and look back, step back and look at it and go, oh my God, I'm so excited. This feels so good. I'm so proud of myself. I've, like it lights you up because it's an, a vibrational, like a resonance of your truth, right? So that's about how you live in your truth. Yeah. It could be how your business is going out, how you're having a conversation like this, <laughs> you know, like it's, there's an essence of you that's just beaming out of who you are mm -hmm. like you're shining look at you <laughs> I, like you know what i mean like you feel it we see it we feel it yeah yeah exactly oh i love it love it love it love it love it oh my goodness girls so oh and then there goes the phone <laughs> I'm just I'm just gonna kick in and it's like oh my goodness seriously this is so funny so it's like mental note unplug the phone from now on I don't normally have so much going on during a day <laughs> stop wanting us to weave through there's a bit of resistance of certain things right but that's so that's okay we, we have to birth and choose yeah Exactly. I'm like, oh my goodness. So <laughs> but for those of you watching live and on the replay, thank you for joining us and thank you for being here um, with all our little interruptions and everything. And for Roberta, what's the best way for people to connect with you and to follow you? I would say for following Instagram, which is Roberta underscore Robbins. Uh, Facebook world. I am there underneath my name, Roberta Robbins, uh, as my personal profile and my business page is that. And my website, guess what it is? Roberta Robbins.com. So, I mean, remember my name and you should be able to find me somewhere. <laughs> somewhere. Yeah. yeah. It's two B's, right? Two B's in last name. Yes. Yeah, I thought so. I was like, oh, I hope I did that right. Okay. There we go. And then, of course, on Facebook. So, yeah. And it's her name, Roberta Robbins. So there you go. Some links in there. And then, yeah. Thank, awesome. thank you so much for being here today. And thank you, everybody, for joining us. And for those of you on the replay, say hi. If you have any questions, go ahead or comments, chime in. And, um, yeah, this has been wonderful. I'll get you to hold on a minute, though, Roberta. But thank you so much, my dear, for being here. This was – I was like – it was just amazing. And you've given me some stuff to like, yeah, just to kind of like sit with. <laughs> yeah, I kind of do that along with sometimes making people cry is the other thing I get. You may, I'm always crying when I'm in session. I'm like, well, here you go. Here's a tissue and I love you. So just let the tears go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. so lovely to be here having a chat with you. Yes. Thank you so much. Have a fabulous day, everybody. Talk to you soon.